Hey what is up guys, welcome to the first episode of this Endless Runner. In this one, we're gonna make sure we create a player prefab and also create a player model script that is going to allow him to just run straight forward. Hi guys, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first thing first, we are going to create a new scene. So I will hit Ctrl N on the keyboard, then Ctrl S to save this. This is going to be the game scene. And I will make a folder for that really quickly. So a scenes folder just like this. Now, um, your project should have only one folder, which is the scene folder. I've also added the asset store folder, which is um, pretty much just assets I've downloaded from the asset store that I'll be using for my game. Now if you don't have some models for this game already, don't worry about it, I'm going to be showing you how to do it with primitives, but um, after that I'll just be swapping for my models. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is actually create a player that moves. This is what we're going to do this episode, we're going to create a player that goes forward, as simple as that. So we are going to go under game object, create a new capsule, just like this, and here is our future player. Now we are going to make sure that he is centered. So that's zero, zero, 0, over here. And then let's change the name for player. We'll also change the tag for player as well. Now that this is done, I am going to remove the capsule collider and add a character controller to it. So the character controller is pretty much the same exact thing as the capsule collider, as you can tell by removing the mesh. So we get the same um, type of collision, but this one is also allowed to move if we call its function called dot move. And that is exactly what we're about to do. So let's go under our project folder. We are going to create a new folder that we'll call scripts. And under there, right click on it, we're gonna create a new C sharp script. Let's call this player motor, just like so. And then if we open it up inside of Mono Develop, we can start coding some action for our player. So basically this is going to be an endless runner game, so we always want our player to go forward all the time. Now like I just said, in order to move a player like this, a player that has the character controller on it, we need to find a reference to this very component right there and call the dot move function. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So first off, let's make sure that we have our player motor on top of the player capsule, just like so. So player motor is over here. Now we're going to add over inside of our script. So now we got to tell him controller is equal to this controller, not any other controller in the scene, this one, the one that is on top of the player. Now, since the player motor is also on the player object, we can simply say inside of the start controller is equal to get component of type character controller like this and now we're gonna get the this very character controller it's going to be stored inside of the controller field and the next step is now to call the move function so if we go under update right here this is going to be called every single frame if we were to put it inside of the start then it would only move once at the very beginning. But since we, we constantly want to move, we're going to be putting this in the update. So we're going to say controller.move, this is the function we want, and then it takes in a vector3 motion. Now the motion we want is vector3.forward, because we want to go forward all the time. Let's have a look at this. So I'm going to hit play, and hopefully we can have our character going forward, like so. But now, I don't know if you can tell, he is pretty fast. The reason is, we tell him to move one meter every single frame. Now, we're going to make sure that we tell him to move one meter every single second instead, by saying vector3 forward times time dot delta time. Now time dot delta time is the time in between two frames. So um, if your PC is running 10 frames a second, time dot delta time is going to be bigger than if it's running on 60 frames a second. Multiplying this by time dot delta time is to make sure that 
what are your PCs running 10 frames a second or 60 frames a second? I mean, your game is running that FPS. Then it's the same on both computer. After one second, it's going to be at the same exact place on both computer. Let's try this once more. And now it is too slow. So we're going to fix that by adding a speed value. So let's go up here and declare a private float that we'll call speed. And I'll be setting my speed on 5. Now if we go down into the update, we can modify vector 34 to be multiplied by speed and then multiply that by the time dot delta time. And now here we go. If we press play, it should go at 5 meters a second. Now I'm quickly going to replace this by the model I have. So um, I've downloaded some assets in the asset store and I'm just going to use this for my game. But of course, if you have your own, you can use that. If you don't have any, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can still use the capsule and just put some models when you're ready. So this is pretty much my player right there. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate pretty much everything I have on there. So animator, I need to keep this for the animation. Rigid body, I'm going to remove that. Remove, remove, remove this. And basically our player is made of the character controller of the player motor. And I think it's also, oh no, this is actually fine. So here we go. That's my new player right there. And let me just make sure that everything is fine on this guy. So maybe erase that. And here we go. So that's my new player. And also make sure we have the player script up there. We're going to need it later on. After that, I'm going to make sure that I can just keep this value saved by drag and dropping this in my project folder. This is going to create a prefab and I can put that inside a prefab folder. So I'll quickly just go ahead and create a new folder, call this prefabs and just drag him in there. All right, so we're off a great start. In the next episode, we're going to tackle the left and right of that player and also the gravity. So guys, I'll see you in the next episode.